everyone, my name is Discourse and I have a confession to make. I have never 3D printed something before. Well, I, I have now, but before this video, before Christmas, I hadn't. I have been learning to do so over the last month. And you may have noticed, but I'm a bit of an idiot. Luckily for me, 3D printing is easy, so let's talk about it. Oh, and you could win a 3D printer as well, so stick around to the end of the video. This video was sponsored by Anycubic, who sent me out this Photon Mono 4K. And they even paid me to review this product. Joke's on them, I was going to do it anyway. <laughs> and I'm not even going to do a real review. Hoo-hoo! So uh, we'll, we'll see if I get paid in the end. Honestly, at this stage, I'm not rating my chances. But rather than review a 3D printer, I'm going to do something much more interesting. I'm going to take the time to explain why you, yes, you should be excited for 3D printing. Talk about how easy it is to start and what my experience as a complete newbie to this has been. And hey, maybe the Photon Mono 4K is for you. This is not going to be a technical video. I am so over technical videos. For one, I'd have to get my clown outfit again. And before I got a 3D printer when I was looking into it, all the discussion I had seen online was very, very technical. There was talk of supports, exposure time, layer depth, speed settings, calibrations, etc, etc. My head was exploding with jargon. But in my experience, for most casual users, like me, none of that is really relevant. You might in time come to care about that stuff, but for now, I'm getting great results doing absolutely nothing at all. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. So when I first started contemplating 3D printing, I was excited, but I was nervous. On the one hand, look at this thing. You can make your own miniatures. How cool is that? Forget the metaverse, you can see a thing online and then just have it printed into your living room. And you can do that in a matter of hours. That is super cool. And it's easy to forget just how crazy this technology is. I never dreamt that something like this would be possible 10 years ago. It's awesome. It's like Star Trek, but you know, not for nerds. Yes, I cover Warhammer. But on the other hand, the idea of a machine spewing fumes all over my apartment, complicated programs and bits of resin scattered everywhere weren't particularly appealing. And I live in a shoebox. I mean, on the lease, it's done as an apartment, but I don't know. So I watched the emergence of 3D printing. Exciting idea, but it felt out of reach for me. And when they first started showing up on the market, they were expensive, very expensive. As in, I could afford Games Workshop miniatures before I could afford one of these. But that's not true anymore. The Anycubic Photon Mono 4K only runs $289. That's only slightly more expensive than a single Warhammer Battle Force. And that's at the premium end of things. Twice the price of a single combat patrol? That's not bad. And looking forward, 3D printers are coming down in price. Warhammer miniatures are going up. Yeah, I had to check these out. However, the price is all well and good, but I know what you're thinking. But this course, I won't be able to resist. I must consume resin. Yeah, I struggled with this too, but I feel like resisting the allure of gorging on my bottles of resin has made me a stronger person. Willpower must be exercised. It doesn't emerge from nowhere. And Lord knows I need it when it comes to miniatures. But secondary to my desire to eat resin, I had another problem. I was worried about just using the thing. When it arrived, I took it out of the packaging and I was left with a big plastic box. What now? Well, any cubic include everything you need with the printer in order to get started. Except for the resin, although you can order it alongside the 3D printer if you want. And it comes with a discount if you do. They do an eco-friendly version of resin, which is what I personally would recommend because it's eco-friendly and I'm afraid of poison ivy. We should all be afraid of poison ivy. I got instructions with the 3D printer, which were super clear. In order to get started, I took the build plate. This is the bit that the models will be made on and I attached it in the box. You just need to loosen a few hinge screws in order to make sure that it lies flat. 
And as far as I know, that's installation all sorted. You don't really have to go near any of that stuff again. It's called zeroing, like a D&D session zero. Then it's as simple as screwing in the tank and pouring in the resin and resisting the urge to lick. And then you're just off to the future of miniature wargaming. Any cubic include a test print, which is this sort of cube thing. It's a cube, cube thing, cube, any cubic, right? And if the test print works, baby, you got a stew going. Reminder, do not eat the resin. You can then fiddle around with some optional settings. These are all included in the instruction manual. For example, you can change the strength of the UV light. I think if you turn that up, it actually prints faster, but I'm not sure. Honestly, I didn't really do anything with that because I've got a bad case of the gremlins. <laughs> So usually factory settings does for me and I've had no issues. And genuinely, as far as hardware is concerned, that's it. That's all you need to know or do. Now there are health risks here and this was one of the main barriers for me. You should not be hanging around this thing when it's printing. And when you're handling resin or putting on a test print, you should wear a mask and gloves. I think after the last few years, we're all used to that by now. And if you do dip your fingers in resin, wash it with soap immediately. Do not consume it. And because it does give off fumes when it's printing, you're better not printing anywhere that isn't well ventilated. So not a cupboard under the stairs and not your baby's room, preferably. I put mine out on the balcony because I have a little roof out there that protects it from the sunshine. And this is really important because UV light hardens resin. In fact, that's what curing is. And this has worked out perfectly for me. I just hope that my landlord isn't watching this video. I don't think there's any clauses in my lease that say I can't do chemical work on the premises. And with my concerns settled, I've now taken to tinkering with sculpts. So the place that I use to download most of my sculpts is My Mini Factory. Though you can also use a website called Cults 3D and there are a few other places as well. I personally like My Mini Factory because of the UI. It splits out creators so that they each have their own individual storefront and each creator is empowered to do things like have sales. So you can just find a creator that you like and browse their library. And then you just buy some STL files, easy peasy. And then once you have that, you just open your slicing software. This is just a program that you're going to need. There's a lot of choices out there, but any cubic do include their own proprietary software, Photon Workshop, which you can download free from their website. And it's the one that I use. Just make sure to get their most up-to-date version. And then you just drag the STL file that you bought into the software. It's that easy. Now, every single model that you print is going to need to be supported. Supports are basically little ladders or scaffolding that connect the model itself to the top of the build plate in the printer. A lot of STL files do come pre-supported, and this means that you don't have to do anything at all. But if they're not pre-supported, all you need to do is click this button and it will automatically place supports for you. Though with Photon Workshop, just be careful to lift the model a little bit off the build plate before adding the supports. Otherwise, they'll come out looking a little weird. Then you take your USB stick, which was provided with the printer. Then you copy the file onto this and just plug it in. Then you just hit print here and select your file and that's it. And then once your print's completed, you just wash it in isopropranol. Isoprop, iso, IPO. It's called IPO. It's a chemical thing. You might've used it already to strip paint from miniatures, but the eco-friendly resin that any cubic cell can be washed with dish soap. So while the eco-friendly resin is a little bit more expensive than the standard resin, I think overall it probably works out to be cheaper because you don't need to buy any IPO. Then you can leave your printed mini in the sunlight to cure and harden. Now that's if you live somewhere that gets sunlight. Uh, I live in Ireland, so I don't. So I bought this UV light for around $27. You just give the minis a blast with this and they're done in seconds. So probably worth it in my opinion. And that's it. There's nothing more needed. That's 3D printing. Genuinely, not even I can screw that up. And then when the 3D print is done, 
you can just scrape it off the build plate using one of these. And then you just clip the supports off with a clipper. Although in my experience, half the time, you can just rip it right out of there. And so far, I've found this easier to use than a traditional printer. I was sort of astounded at how easy 3D printing really was. And there's so much content out there these days for troubleshooting if you do run into problems. But I'm gonna be honest, guys, I haven't run into a single issue. It's been working perfectly for me. And remember to use legitimately purchased STLs and not use your 3D printer to infringe on copyrighted material. <coughs> now I printed off a few models with this printer in order to get across the variety of miniatures that you can have these days. Okay, and these General Grievous looking guys are the Robot Legions from One Page Rules. These models came as one piece, so there was no assembly that went into them. Plenty of folds here in the cloak, but you can see that their posing is pretty good, and the depth of detail is great. And you can see that the limbs are very slight, so it's surprising the amount of precision that you can get from one of these machines. These guys look awesome, and they come with a variety of weapons. Each one filled with detail. You can see the lines on their faces are distinct and contrast paint will take to them very well in my experience. And here is a truck. This has already been primed. I printed this to use as a little bit of terrain. Maybe I'll use it for my gene stealer cults. And you can see it looks really good. And it's not too heavy. It's a nice weight to it. And it costs probably around $2 worth of resin. So really, it's a very cost-effective solution for populating a table, and it can be easily used to proxy all sorts of miniatures for your favorite game. This is the buggy from Duncan Shadow. And look, the depth of detail that you get from these 3D models will be a little bit less than what you would get from, say, a Games Workshop miniature. But damn, it's close. And for the price you're paying, it's incomparable. There's just so much long-term value in these things. And it's completely changed my relationship with miniatures. I don't really view them as rare, pristine items. Now I can experiment with them. I can do all sorts of crazy paint schemes just to see how it will turn out. It's really exciting. And I've gone on a bit of a printing spree with this thing. Honestly, I felt like a kid in a candy store. And a surprise for me was that printing time is not bad at all. Usually you can fit around five or six infantry in a single print. Though you can fiddle around with how you stack them. I think that my record is around 11 miniatures at once. And this takes around three to four hours to print a squad. And it's not like you have to sit and watch it print. You can go off and do whatever or paint the last squad that you printed. Oh, and opposed to common wisdom, 3D printers do not go burr. It's more like a zzz. I don't know, you can't really hear it. So yeah, there you go. If you've ever wondered how hard is it to 3D print something, the answer is it's not. So if you want to check it out, why not check out the Anycubic Photon Mono 4K? There is a link in the description below. And if you want a chance to win a Photon Mono 4K yourself, just leave a comment on this video saying what model you would most love to print. And you can look on places like My Mini Factory for ideas, because there is a lot of awesome models out there. And just make sure to include the word print, P-R-I-N-T, in your comment and I'll pick out a commander at random to receive a printer. And this will be drawn in the next week. And as always, a big thank you to everyone that supports the channel, especially my patrons whom you can see listed here. And thanks to Anycubic for sponsoring the video. And if you wanna see more future content like this, please subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you next time. Oh, and don't eat the resin, that was a joke. Bye bye